When we don't know React and we arrive on this GSX file, we find a real problem. This problem is that we recognize some JavaScript code with all the time a function that is exported. However, inside this function, we got something that we didn't saw before, which is basically HTML code with tags, divs, anchors, images, h1, paragraph. So if you did some HTML and CSS before, like it's a real problem for you because you, you discover something that you didn't saw before, HTML inside JavaScript. With JavaScript and jQuery, for example, you can write, you can create some HTML. However, you never write HTML directly inside your file. Here, with React, we've got a new possibility. It's to write JSX, JavaScript XML, in order to help us to basically write directly inside one, one file everything that is going to be rendered on the browser. Because with React, with the React component, and here with the JSX uh, file, everything inside will be rendered, all right? So basically, the solution to write directly here some HTML is to use JSX. The difference here with HTML is that sometimes some uh, methods that we got access to here are a bit different. It can occur that you get some difference, but basically if you know how to write HTML, you can write here directly at the end of your function, your code that is going to display the page that you want to, that you want to show. That being said, let's talk about the, the structure of a GSX file. So a GSX file, it's mainly a function that we always export because everything is a component in React. Here, everything will be a module. So you need to export it to be a piece of another big um, thing that here is actually uh, main.gsx. So here we call app and to import app, of course, we need to export it. Okay, that's the first step. So at first, it's always a function. Then, after that, on this part here, you can write some JavaScript. So here, this is totally open to any JavaScript that you want to write. If you know JavaScript, this is really good. If you start React without knowing JavaScript, probably you should follow a course with some basics about JavaScript. Otherwise, you will be lost very fast, okay? Because on top of JavaScript, you can also use, if you want, the React hooks. And those hooks are piece of JavaScript written inside React, inside the library of React, that help you to do some other operations, such as the use effect, for instance, use a state, and until now, use memo that will disappear with the new version of React. So basically, here you can write some JavaScript, but you can also use the React hooks and this is the goal of this course. I'm going to teach you all the hooks that you need to know if you want to work with the reactivity of React and also if you want to do some events, some stuff like this, okay? Then the third part, I would say, and here the React hooks or JavaScript, I'm just writing this like this, okay? Probably you can first do the hooks before the JavaScript in, in, in the other order. It really depends on what you want to do. Of course, remember that JavaScript is reading a file from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right. So if you try to use a variable that doesn't exist before, here we can see that count is not available at this point. This is logic JavaScript um, uh, knowledge. Okay, so the last part here, it's your GSX. And inside this GSX, you got some HTML. And which is a bit disturbing at the beginning with GSX, it's that you can write some JavaScript inside here, inside your HTML. You can do some operation directly inside the onClick, for instance. So here inside the onClick, we call this set count coming from the user state. And again, here, I'm not going to talk about user state because it's going to come in its own listen. But we can see here that we are doing an operation to just uh, increment the actual count. Okay, so all of that, again, is possible because 
Why? Because we have the reactivity, the hot reload, the fast refresh module that help us to uh, display all of that. And on the fly here, the GSX is transformed into JavaScript and HTML. All right, so let me give you an example. Like most of the time when you want to use a label here, you've got this HTML4 that you would use here um, in, in, um, in GSX to display something. So let's say that is going to be name input, whatever, or name. Let's just put name, okay? Here we got HTML4. But in HTML, you don't know uh, actually um, this, this, uh, this entry here, okay? You, you know label 4, right? So basically, there's some stuff like this that are changing in GSX, but to be honest, you are not obliged to know all of them, right? You are not obliged to know all of them. Uh, you just got to check them when you need them, okay? It's not, for me, it's not a priority to learn every changes between HTML and GSX, with the time you will totally uh, get it, totally understand. Another thing that you can see here is that we are using camel case and we don't use the iPhones because here, this is how it works, inside React, these attributes here, they are recognized only if you use the, um, only if you use the camel case. A specificity here, and this is probably the most important, and this is why I'm talking about it, about it now. Um, here, we don't, we never type class. And the reason is obvious, it's because in JavaScript, class is already taken. It has another purpose, another usage, okay? When you create a class in JavaScript, it means something. So if you type class here, you're gonna have a problem. It will recognize it as the JavaScript word to create a new class. So instead in React, we use class name and then we type here all the classes. For the rest here, we can see the source, the alt, the target, the href. It's really familiar with what we got in HTML for you of course, because this is real HTML. A last explanation to be to go fast. This H1 that we got in here, it's basically some JavaScript code that has been written. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to create an example file to show you, okay? So I'm going to write this example.js. As you can see here, I got an H1 react from zero to zero. Okay, so I'm just going to save this title in here, here that I got this here, and I got my title that I would like to render. Well, what's happening in here when I write uh, uh, this H1 and it's render here? It's really simple. It's going to do here my title, for instance, it's going to call React. And remember, we got the React um, imported at the root of our main. So if I come back in here, we can see that I got React that is imported in here, okay? And it's going to call React. And on React, we got a function called create element. And this function create element here, it's going to target here the H1. Uh, it's going to create the H1, sorry. It's not gonna pass any uh, element here in any data, and it's going to use my title, which is up here. So what is happening when I write here my H H1, it's going to write all this code in here in JavaScript. <laughs> it's as easy as this, okay? And this create element here will render what? It will render what we wrote. So exactly this. That's the uh, the translation between the H1 inside this GSX to this uh, piece of code that we got here. As I said to you before, everything that is going to be in this GSX file will be rendered, and we can see that my console log has been already rendered. So if I put my console log here on the top, I don't get the count, as you can see which is totally normal. So what I can do is just to remove that and put my hello app like this. And we can see here when I reload that I got my hello app, which is uh, displayed up here. Okay, if I create a const name and I put here uh, Guillaume, for instance, okay. And I want to uh, render Guillaume uh, down here. Let's say that I want first to console log it inside the JavaScript part. So if I put uh, um, name here, there we go. We can see that I got Guillaume that is appearing in here. But the difference is that here, 
If I don't put a user state, it's not going to be reactive. We are going to see that again after. So here I got everything that I can use directly. And here we can see that I can execute some code. What's happening if I put that? I trigger before app, okay? So if I try to reload, look at this. Suddenly, our alert, which is before the function, stop here it stops the rendering of app, which is totally normal in JavaScript. So we can see that I trigger for app here, uh, before app here appears. And if I type on OK, all the code that is in app is going to be rendered. So if I click OK, suddenly, boom, I got my code rendered. All right, now I trigger here. Let's say I'm going to stop that. I'm going to put I trigger now, OK? Okay, I trigger now, I trigger now, I trigger now. You can see that the reactivity is doing its, its job. Here we see that I'm locked. And if I try to continue like this, I'm totally locked. I'm in some kind of loop. So several things we learned today. We learned that a GSX component has basically three parts or two parts. We could say JavaScript and HTML. The full file is a JavaScript file. And we write some HTML in a new kind, which is called the JavaScript XML, that helps us to mix, basically, JavaScript with HTML. And all React files are going to use GSX, OK? You don't want to use HTML, but it's not mandatory. You are not obliged to write here um, some uh, GSX, you can just write a simple title. So let's just give an example. If I hide all of that and I put just an H1, this is my course, okay, and I save. So some React component can just be um, written with just simple HTML um, parts inside the GSX. GSX is not only used in um, React, um, it gained a lot of popularity because it's really easy to write on one page at the same time the HTML and the JavaScript. So we got actually um, full focus on one file when we write the code and we definitely know what we do between jumping between different files, okay? Uh, which is something that I personally don't like in Angular, even if I like Angular, but like it's, it's more convenient for me to write on only one file 